So in terms of this classifying this pr particular profile to the great group and to the subgroup level, uh, the great groups, the, the verticellic order is actually quite simple in terms of the various great groups that it has associated with it. There's just the the verticellic great group or the humic verticel great group, where the difference between the two, as is the case where we've seen uh, humic great groups or subgroups before, just refers to the presence of, uh, of a reasonably thick A horizon, so an AH horizon or an AP horizon of greater than uh, 10 centimeters thickness with significant amounts of, of organic carbon associated with it. So just in terms of looking at this profile and the, the, the fact that we don't see a lot of gradation in color from the surface of the, of the soil profile down into the B horizons, we would say that this belongs to the, the straight ahead vertisol uh, great group. So uh, we would just say that this is a vertisol. So in, in terms of the subgroups associated with the, uh, with the vertisolic order, again, fairly simple. There are, just, uh, there are just three subgroups. There's the orthic subgroup, uh, the, the glade subgroup and the glycolic subgroup. So that where the glade and the glycolic basically reflect different degrees of uh, evidence of redox occurring, so of reducing conditions. So very often these low-lying, broad, flat landscapes uh, with heavy clay soils tend to be prone to, to flooding, so you get a lot of prolonged saturation. And so uh, in more humid areas where you find the glycolic order, you're going to be more likely to find uh, evidence of glaying to greater or lesser degrees. In this particular environment though in southwestern Saskatchewan we don't see any evidence of glaying either so this would just be basically be classified as an orthic, uh, as an orthic vertisol on glacial uh, heavy clay parent material.